Welcome to Gas Up the Pacer. I'm Armando. That's Lou. And in this show, we are doing our week three in review. We're going to take a look at some of the games, some of the good games, surprises from week three. Um, some of the teams that we nailed as far as our prediction goes or who we thought they were. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. And <laughs> some of the some of the teams that we've gotten completely wrong so far. So with that being said, uh, if you want to follow Lou or I on Twitter, you can follow me at Junior D's. You can follow Lou at Lou at Sweet Lou 3434. Mess it up one more time. I mess it up at least once a week. So Your, your pay is going to start reflecting it, too. I, I apologize, sir. I've been around here paying people for nothing. <laughs> Oh, so with that said, let's get into it. Um, good games or surprises from week three. I had two games that, that were, A, were really good games. The Bills-Rams game started out as a blowout. The Rams come back, yeah. turned into a really good game. I thought the officiating was terrible in that game. <laughs> And there was, I mean, there was just two really, really bad calls in that game. The Bills end up winning it on a, on a phantom pass interference call from, from my standpoint. If you ask any Bills fan, and I know plenty of them out there, they'll tell you that that was, pa- at the very least, it was holding, if not pass yeah. interference. So... I mean, I guess if I'm a Bills fan, I'm like, that's totally pass interference. We win the game. But it is what it is. That was a really good game. The Rams, I'm actually really surprised. The Bills are who I thought they were. Just yeah. straight out the gate. I knew the Bills were going to be good. I knew the Bills were going to give the Patriots or whoever a run for the AFC East this year. Uh, they're winning it. Josh Allen. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna win it easily. Josh Allen right now is playing incredible football. Yeah, so well, yeah, I give him that. He's and, a runner up for the MVP right now. Right now, yeah, absolutely. I did see somebody say, you know, can somebody make an argument against Josh uh, Josh Allen for MVP? And I was like, Yeah, I Russell Wilson. Hands down, <laughs> Russell Wilson. Uh, I Russell got two Wilson, words for you, Russell Wilson. He is playing out of his mind this year. Oh, yeah. And that Seahawks-Cowboys game was a fantastic game. Two things. One, Russell Wilson, as of going into week four, is hands down the MVP of the season so far. He's Absolutely. playing. But he's playing better ball than he ever has since he's been in the league. I don't think that he can keep up the five touchdowns a week <laughs> run that he's on. It's if he's he gonna, does, I want to see it. I d- exactly. I'd love to see that because I got him on fantasy. So he wanted to keep throwing five touchdowns a week. I'm totally down with that. But <laughs> he'll come back down to, to earth a little bit. Um, it won't be this week because they're playing the Dolphins. But that's that's my one point. My second point is there's. Obviously, the Cowboys are probably one of the more polarizing teams now that Tom Brady's away from New England. Um, and with the Cow, like, there's so many people talking shit about Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, but yeah, yes, he is. We talked, we talked in our in our picks against the spread show about the Falcons not running the football late in games. The Cowboys, what did, what did Zeke have last week? 15 rushes? 10? And then he had, but he had 12 catches, but for only 24 yards. Yeah, they, Zeke, did, Zeke didn't show up in Seattle. They go away from the run so quickly in games. I don't know why. That's Mike, hey, Mike McCarthy. I, I mean, he, I get he coached, it. He coached Rodgers for years. They threw the ball. That's what he knows. That's what they're going to do. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, you have Zeke in the backfield. Yeah, use that yep. man. That's he's a but grown he, ass man. You can run down the clock. How, mu- defense, how much did he use Amon Green? One of Amon Green yet? 
Yeah, it was ripping so. stuff up for a while. Yeah. But what, what? But every time you turn around, Mike McCarthy's throwing the ball because you got Aaron Rodgers, and no, he loves that. I get it, but they also Green Bay also had good defenses then. The Cowboys defense is not good. No, it's, it's they're, garbage. They're, they're giving up what an average of thirty points a game. Through, it's, through three, it's garbage through three weeks. And listen, I know defenses in this league are going to be giving up points. Once you get to week five and six, everything starts to come back down to earth a little bit. The good yeah. defenses will, 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 you know, they'll start letting up less points and that kind of thing. But right now, you're averaging like 30 points a game you're giving up. Put the ball in Zeke's hand and drain the fucking clock. Stop slinging the ball just because Russell Wilson just threw an 80-yard touchdown pass. How about you run the ball and take the ball out of his hands for just a little bit and you might win some of these games. So are you talking about Cowboys or Atlanta? Because that I'm applies talking about, to both of those teams. It does apply to both of those teams. <laughs> but right now, I'm ta- I'm definitely talking about the Cowboys. Because oh, here's the here's the funny thing. For for a team like the Cowboys, who there's a lot of like people that don't like the Cowboys really don't like the Cowboys. Yeah. But there's not a player outside of the player who rolled up and Gator rolled on Car- uh, Chris Carson. There's not a single Dallas Cowboy that I'm like, yeah, I don't like that dude. I like Dak. I like CeeDee you Lamb. You only don't like that like- dude because you got the running back in fantasy football. Other than that, you wouldn't care about that dude. Yes and no. That's just no, – listen, there's, no. there's, there's an unwritten – I just – I hate seeing players get hurt because of cheap shit. That bothers me regardless. Does it bother me more because Chris Carson's on my fantasy team? Absolutely. (laughs) I am not going to lie about that. But I hate seeing cheap shit like that and a player go, a good player go down because some dude decided to be a prick for five seconds after a play. That just, that just bugs me. But I like this Dallas Cowboys team. I like Zeke. I like Dak. I like CeeDee Lane. I like all those guys. I just but I want to better see, fix something because we'll talk about them in our disappointing teams because they should be zero and three. They they should be zero and three. If, A if legitimate zero and three. If the the only more disappointing team than the Cowboys are the Falcons. If the Falcons could jump on an onside kick, hey, just note to the Falcons: you don't have to wait for it to go ten yards to jump on that ball. Just an FYI, but whatever I mean, is what it is. I've seen turtles run faster than that ball was coming. <laughs> it was coming slow as hell. Just jump on that ball, man. Everybody was too scared, too scared to jump on that ball, and that's what happened. Nobody wanted, to, nobody wanted to miss it. Yep. And were there any games that you saw that were a surprise? I mean, besides the fact that, listen, I know we talk shit about the Falcons. But how do you let the Bears – well, I'll tell you how you let the Bears win. You let Nick Foles come in and score 20 points in, in the fourth quarter. That's – And you and you quit running – and you just don't try to run the ball at all. Yeah. That, that's how you lose that game. But the game that shocked me, um, it did, but it didn't. Because when we get into our teams who, who are what we thought they'd be, I'm going to sound like I'm contradicting myself. But it's also exactly where they are, and that's the Cardinals. Losing a home to the Lions – because Kyler Murray looked like a second-year quarterback who had never taken a snap before. Yep. He threw three picks. He should have thrown five. They dropped two. Straight, yep. flat out, dropped two. So he should have threw five. And they end up losing to the Lions team, who should be two and one instead of one and two. Yeah. But, again, the Lions are who we, know, who we thought they would be. They're one and two because they're the Lions. They're, and they do they're. dumb shit to lose games. Now, this is where the Cardinals are still a year away because yeah. next year they don't lose this game. No. That shit Pittsburgh does. Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pittsburgh loses games like this. Yeah, They'll go – we're not talking about them right now, but they'll go to Jacksonville and lose in a few weeks. Trust me, I've seen that record before. Yeah. That's what the Cardinals just did. They just pulled that shit at home. You got to be laser focused. If you have you not seen the Seahawks yet, the 49ers are playing with the practice squad players, blowing motherfuckers out. You not Absolutely. seen them? Yeah. The any Aaron Donald, 
is picking up grown ass linemen at a two at a time and setting them to the side and snatching quarterbacks up. <laughs> you might want to be focused every week. You got to win games like this. Your division is the best division in football that I've seen top to bottom in probably seven or eight years. Yep. You got to win could go to, Absolutely. They could go to any other division. I would say – outside of the AFC West and the NFC North and probably the Patriots and be the favorite in that division. And I'm not talking about my Steelers. I'm talking about because of the Ravens, even though they just got their ass kicked. But this team will be the favorite in any any other division outside of those three probably because yeah. no, nobody's being favored over the Chiefs. And you ain't going to the – new. I ain't giving you shit over at NFC East till somebody proved they can beat the Patriots, even though I picked the Bills this year. Patriots are the Patriots until somebody beat them. But this team did what they can't. They're, they're young. What, I mean, they got some old heads on the squad, but they're young at just trying to get over the hump and win thing. Absolutely. And they, they pulled that shit, and I just watched it like, man, so the, the kid got to button it up. Outside of Arizona, who who's another team – because I'll tell you what, the team that I nailed it with going into this year was the Seahawks. The first thing I said when we were doing like our predictions and that kind of, I have been discounting the Seahawks for far too long with no reason as to why. Every year I'm like, ah, you know, they'll be like 10 and 5. They won't win the division. Somebody, I'm always picking the other sexy team in their division to win that division. Because they... Because they'll go nine and seven or ten and six and don't do anything flashy. Yeah, and that's why you overlooked them this year. I said don't don't overlook the Seahawks. I didn't see what's going on now. I didn't see that. Like I got yeah, it right. Is, like is that a level off. Yeah, I was like you know don't overlook them. I didn't see them putting up you know forty points a week <laughs> to start the season. <laughs> I don't think anybody saw that. No, um, that's that's ridiculous. The one thing that I did like DK Metcalf, but I didn't realize DK Metcalf was going to do what DK Metcalf was because if people knew that he was going to start off the season like this, he would have been a first round pick in the in fantasy. Well, they didn't think Russell Wilson would do what he's doing because Metcalf can only do what he's doing because the quarterback is playing at such a high level. Yeah, I mean that's just that's, that's just, just what it is. DK Metcalf is just a grown ass man. He's just throwing like yeah. there's no cornerback that's out there that if it's a one on one matchup, he's not going to win. Yeah, it's like Debo Samuel when he gets back. Exactly, it's going to be the same thing. Isn't yep. it? and that's why I drafted. If you took you took Metcalf. I said okay, then I'll take Samuel. If you took Samuel, I said okay, I'll take Metcalf because they're they're young and they're grown ass men. Yeah. And they're, they're going to dominate what they're going to do. And Pittsburgh has one of those that's going to break out next year, not this year, and Chase Claypool. That dude's a monster. Yeah, He's just, he just learning the offense, though. But a team that I hit spot on was the Bills. I didn't go out on a very skinny branch for that. <laughs> but they look like I thought they would look. I still uh, Josh Allen is still taking too many one-yard touchdown runs away from running backs for fantasy football purposes. But and he's still turning that fucking ball over too much. Yeah. But they look like they are going to win this division. And when they play the Patriots in week 17, I think it's the last game of the year, it ain't even going to matter because they're going to be up two or three games. Yeah. They should be anyway. And they they should be up two or three games and it won't even matter. That's the game that they usually lose to the Patriots when Winners in first place, losers in second. They 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 fuck up and lose it. When yeah. that time comes this year, it's not. I don't think it's going to matter. And that's because the Patriots will stub their toe a couple times along the way. But yeah, I mean, I I thought they would be good, and they are good. They they are pretty damn good. Yep. And another team that I was spot on about this season, and I took so much shit for it. The New York Football Jets. <laughs> Come at me, bro, with any shit. Lou and I, at the beginning of the season, did our picks and did our, you know, this is what we think these guys are going to do. And I, I, I 
I went hard in the paint with with the Jets. And my prediction was six and ten. It wasn't like, oh my God, it's the end of times. Yeah, my your prediction per- was worse than yours. Your prediction was what, two and fourteen? It was and I think it was three and thirteen or two. Three, it was it was bad. Like it was bad. I yeah. think you're gonna be closer this year than me, personally. Yeah. Because the football that I, hey, I haven't seen any football being played in New York by either team. <laughs> either team. Okay. So this this team and and my main reason was because I like Sam Darnold. You know, Le'Veon Bell's a good running back, but he gets a little ouchy from time to time. You know, when he knows that the team's gonna be bad and he doesn't want to play, man, my hamstring feeling a little tight. Let me go ahead and sit this one out, coach. And they have a coach who might be a good coordinator, but he is not a head coach. No. And no. this man will keep this job to the end of the season, mark my words, no matter how many games they lose. He will keep <sighs> but he they if they need, look if they, they look to bad go tomorrow now. night, man. If they look bad tomorrow night, I think he might be gone. I that, you got I a would standalone have, national game. I would you're, hope. The, every, you're listening to the players aren't, the coaches aren't, but the owner is. You're listening to everybody laugh at the game you have tomorrow night. And the Broncos just have everybody hurt. Yeah, the Jets have some injuries, but the Broncos actually have talented guys that got hurt. Mm -hmm. You just have injuries because you have no talented guys. Outside, I still like Sam Darnold. I think Le'Veon is is just wishing he was still in Pittsburgh. He'll never admit it. But nonetheless, if they get beat tomorrow night, man, a, a rookie undrafted quarterback, free agent, Beat you in your place, fans or no fans, on a short week. How how you keeping the coach around? Yeah, I I don't see it. I'm right there. I, I'm right there with you. The team uh, is brutal. The team is terrible, and both of us called that from from the beginning, from before the season started. Sadly. Because I love the quarterback, the team, one of the teams that I was completely wrong about thus far in the season are the three and O Packers, man. I yeah, buried, you were. I, I was huge on the Packers in 2019 and, and they did me proud. And Aaron Rodgers, he put his body on the line for that team and, <laughs> and they did well. And I just thought, Going into this season, there is no way he could pull it off again. And that whole team is playing well. They're three and oh. Oh yeah. They I mean, they put a good Dude, they gotta shot be averaging over. they gotta be averaging forty a game. Oh yeah. They're I 43 mean they, they, 40 and thirty seven. Yeah, they, they just beat the Saints um thirty seven thirty. So yeah, I think they've scored 120 points in three games. Yeah, so I don't ma- I don't math they, well, but if that's the case, that's 40 a game. Yeah, that's it's 40 43 34, 42 21 and 37 30, dude. That's there you go. They just opened 40 a game. Oh, I mean they they and they're looking good doing it. Okay. Styling and now, profiling. Now again, Minnesota scored 34 against them. Detroit scored 21 against them. New Orleans scored 30 against them. Now they played a couple of good offenses here. Yeah. And Detroit, and and in, in, in the Detroit game, Detroit scored the first 14 yes. and only wound up with 21. Yes, absolutely. That's why they are who we think they are. Yeah. But then then you play the Saints in New Orleans, fans or no fans, they're gonna score on you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And 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 they were so far out in front of Minnesota. Shit. Give them some points. Yeah, exactly. So, they look but yeah, good. I will admit I was completely wrong about the Packers. So that's a, that's a mea culpa through three weeks. That's that's my bad. So, well, I'm gonna tell you this: my team that people are gonna tell me that I was wrong on, that I'm absolutely right on, and I said don't draft any one of their players in fantasy football, and I'm still standing by it. Are the three and O Chicago Bears? I said they would be terrible, and damn it, they are going to be terrible. They should be at best, at best one and two. But you are what your records say you are. So Absolutely. you're three and zero. 
Okay, so far, joke's on me. Let's see who the joke's on at the end of the year. These guys are farce. The Lions had them blown out, gave up like 16 or 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to, to give the Bears the win. Uh, the Falcons had them blown out, yep. refused to run the ball. And, hell, who's not going to beat the Giants this year? So well, they should be and one and two. Exactly. Exactly. They should be one and, and two right now. And they've already their quarterback. They're benched their quarterback two and a half games into this thing. Yep. And so, I mean, we'll we'll see go. we'll see how the rest of the season plays out. I'm because I, I'm, I was with you. Now I didn't go as far as to say there is not a single draftable player on the, on the damn field. Like I was like, hold on, <laughs> there's there's a couple guys that are okay. Like you could draft Allen Robinson. He's he's a top tier wide receiver. I understand not why with Trubisky you, quarterbacking. I understand why you don't like him because of the quarterback situation. <laughs> yes. However, I'm like you know, there are, there's a couple players on that team, but Trubisky bad, just it's bad. He's done. not he's not the answer. He's done. Whatever happens this season, they're gonna draft a they're gonna have to draft a quarterback next season because Nick yep. Foles is not gonna last another 13 games. Okay. So they're going to need to draft another quarterback because they're going to be stuck with Trubisky for at least seven more games this season. Exactly. But I'm not willing to say I was wrong on them yet. I'm kind of where you are because yes, with us. it's coming. You got Indy coming up. You got Tampa coming up. You got Carolina, the Rams, New Orleans, Tennessee, Minnesota. Those are your next okay. games. I so don't you think have they... maybe one more win in that group. Maybe one. And that's the iffy Carolina game. Yes. You got maybe one more win in that group. Yep. So and if y'all got something to say, say it now. Say I'm it with your right chest. Say it with your chest. As you got to. <laughs> but I'm gonna be right. Those I mean, those are all the 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 teams that uh, you know, I got right or I got wrong. I don't think there's anything else out there. The Texans, we were both right on. The Texans are terrible. Um, and not yeah. because of the players. They have good players on that team. But that coaching staff, talk about another coaching staff. The coaching staff from the Texans and the Falcons need to go buy a house together somewhere because they're but I both will, terrible. I will say this. The Texans had the roughest three-game start in arguably the history of the NFL. I'm sick and Chiefs, tired of hearing that shit. But, I am but, sick but and watch. tired of it. The the last time they started 0-3, they went 11 and 5. Look at their next five games. They're gonna win all of them. Okay. They're gonna win every one of these fucking games because that's what they do. Why bury yourself? But you know what they do? They play themselves out of home games in the playoffs. One by you playing yourself out of it. And then if that doesn't work, we'll just trade Deshaun Watson. Since trading DeAndre Hopkins didn't help, we'll just trade Watson. <laughs> yeah, let's trade all we'll trade him best. for Trubisky. Yeah, because, you know, Bill O'Brien's like, well, I can win with anybody. They're just football players. Yeah, we'll just trade Watson straight up for Trubisky. <laughs> Send Watson to the Bears. Like, I actually – the Texans are another team that I want to like that I can't like because their coach infuriates me. Does dumb stuff. Just yeah, Just dumb. Yeah, but I mean that's about it. The Chargers are going to be bad, and it's just because they have a rookie at quarterback because their starter got his chest punctured by a doctor. Um, yeah, the doctor stabbed the starting quarterback. <laughs> Sounds think, way more interesting than that. Like that, yeah, yeah. Stabbing. I think that's that's the the first time that's happened in NFL history. Um, <laughs> but yeah, everybody. The 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 only thing that kind of surprises me this year is. The Buccaneers' defense. I did not think they were going to be as good as they've been playing. Yeah, I didn't. I, yeah, they they look pretty damn good. That was that that was but, the only one. But it's usually when people don't talk about you and you get a chance to quietly build because all they did was talk about their offense. Yeah, and that defense is Shaq Barrett. Them dudes, man, they playing. They're good. They look really good. They look yep. really good. Absolutely. Well, do you got anything else for this week for this show? No, my Steelers is three and zero as expected, but we'll go from there. All right, Def to... defense still look good. Offense coming around. They'll they'll fuck around, lose to Tennessee on like seventeen field goals, and move <laughs> on from there. 
That's cool. I get to wa- I get to watch my Dolphins get their ass kicked by Russell Wilson and his MVP run. You're gonna steamroll the shit out of them. It's gonna be great. No, man. that's gonna that's gonna be a little closer than you think. Okay. But it's too late to change the <laughs> pick. But it's gonna be a little closer than you think. Uh, now they ain't gonna win, but it's gonna be a little closer than you think. I don't think so. But with that said. <laughs> For Lou, I'm Armando. This is Gas Up the Pacer. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you guys again next week. Yeah, yeah.